Hello everyone, this is Travis Tidwell, and uh, what I'd like to do today is just give you guys a quick overview, or as quick as I possibly can, overview of the improvements that I've been making to the MediaFront module to, uh, to go from version 1.0 up to uh, the version 2x branch on Drupal.org. Uh, before I actually dive real deep into these improvements, uh, what I would like to do is just give a big shout out um, to two uh, sponsors who have really made this thing happen. Um, and the first one is Cybersafe.com and then also Mile3.com. Uh, for anybody who sees this video and likes what you see and, and are really excited about it, um, please give these people a big pat on the back because if it wasn't for their contributions to actually sponsor the development of MediaFront 2.0, this wouldn't happen. Um, I also would like to give a big shout out to my employer, which is allplayers.com. Uh, for anybody who is interested in group management or anything of that sort, uh, please head on over to allplayers.com and check it out because it's an amazing website and we do some really amazing things. So. Um, all three of these, um, I just want to give a big thank you. Um, so let's actually go ahead and move back over here and let's get started with the demo. Um, the very first question I'm going to uh, answer is what is the difference between MediaFront 1.0 and MediaFront 2.0? And the answer to that question is pretty much everything. Uh, MediaFront 2.0 uh, was a complete refactor of the original MediaFront module to make it not only more optimized but also streamlined interface and then also the media player was completely refactored from the ground up so that it utilizes um, what's called a core media player to do all the media functionality and then the open standard media player builds on top of that to bring in the playlist support and all of the other really cool bells and whistles that you guys are very familiar with. Um, as far as the um, setup is concerned so let's uh, what I what I've got here is I've got a, a just a demo site that I've set up it's in Drupal 7 um, I've already got some media already uploaded um, how a typical uh, media site would be configured um, really quickly what I'd like to do is just go over how I've configured all of this um, so anybody out there that wants to kind of follow along is able to do so um, so we're going to actually start by going to structure and content types and what I've done is I've created a new content type called media under manage fields I've created a two uh, I created a file field and I've just called it media upload I gave it a widget of file under uh, then I also created an image uh, which is a widget of image and then it's an image upload if we look at the settings for file so you click on edit so this is when you're actually setting up the uh, file what I've done is um, I've added some extensions uh, for media that you can see right here. So um, it's like MP4, M4V, MOV, FLV. Um, so if anybody can just take a screenshot of that, you'd be able to um, enter all of the extensions that I have already put. Um, I don't have any maximum size for uploads just because I want to allow my server to handle that. One thing that is different. Uh, with MediaFront. Um, actually, you know what, I'm not, I don't want to go down that rabbit trail just quite yet, so let me just continue uh, showing you what settings I have. So under image, this is the image field, and you'll see here I've got the allowed extensions, PNG, GIF, and JPEG, and, and um, all of that. This is just typical, very, very typical uh, configuration for uh, media management in Drupal 7. If we head over to manage display, what you'll see here is I have an image upload and a media upload. I've just, just given it a, a default format, which is an image. I've given it the style of large. And for media upload, I have a generic file. So that any time that I would go and create a new, so add content, create a new media, and let's say I walked through and actually did all this, what you would end up with is something that looks very similar to this, where you would have an image you would have the file that links directly to the file and such. So this is a very typical scenario um, of actually getting media set up on in Drupal. Um, also, you'll notice on the home page, um, I've got a nice little grid outline of all the media that I have on my site. This is done with the views module. So if I if I um, which you do by going to structure and views. And what I've done is I've created a new view called media, and it is a page. So 
let's click on edit just to show you what this looks like. It's a page. I've given it a format of grid. Um, I've included the fields, image upload and media upload, and as well as title, and um, set up the pager. Actually, the pager should probably say 16, just because I want it to be in multiples of four. So I'll go ahead and make that change. We'll hit save. And it should look a little bit better. Yeah, so now we have 16 now, which looks really cool. Um, and so that's pretty much it. That's, that's the setup that I have at this point. Um, modules that I have installed um, right now. Um, well, right now I have media module installed, but um, just for this demo, you actually don't need media module. You can use uh, the file field out of Drupal, and you can also use the image up the image field that comes directly out of Drupal. Um, and then I also have media front. Um, I have views installed. And the new MediaFront 2.0 um, requires C tools, um, so you'll need to make sure that you have that installed as well. And after that, I've just installed it. So if you go over to modules, you'll see. I'll show you what exactly what I've installed. So as far as modules is concerned, there's really not much difference between MediaFront 1.0 and 2.0. Um, so here is MediaFront, and you'll see I've got the 2x dev installed. Min player, I'm actually thinking this might actually deprecate, deprecate now. I haven't quite decided yet if I'm going to deprecate it or not. And the reason is is because I've made the open standard media player use min player as a core now. So the min player is like a core player for open, oh, the OSM player, which means that you can actually configure your preset to just, just be the min player if you wanted to. Um, but I'll go into more detail on that uh, later on in this demo. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need. So let's go ahead and just uh, go over the high-level items of what has changed in MediaFront 2.0. We're going to start by going to Structure. We're going to MediaFront Presets. The way that this works hasn't really changed. Um, you add presets. You can configure your players just how you did in MediaFront 1.0. The biggest change between 1.0 and 2.0 is not necessarily setting up your preset. It's how you use the preset and I think that's the biggest thing to note with the 2x upgrade so what I'm going to do the very first thing is I'm going to add a preset and what we want to do um, with a preset is we want to change this display this view to show a media player so a lot of people who are familiar with MediaFront 1.0 you're familiar with this demo already where I'm just going to convert this into a media player so what I'm going to do is st structure MediaFront presets and I'm just going to call this the, just the main player. And I'm going to just keep the open standard media player selected, and I'm going to hit next. Uh, the very first thing you may notice whenever you do this is that the, the player looks much more modernized. Um, that was one big complaint that I had with the 1x versions of MediaFront was that the media player just looked dated um, and that the, the controls were really thin. It was hard to grab onto the the controls and, and actually do anything with it. Um, the control bar actually intruded with the video um, as far as real estate concerned. The new player, the control bar after five seconds automatically hides itself so that you basically get that real estate back for your video. Um, the playlist is much more streamlined. I've removed some controls that weren't really ever used. Um, so you'll just notice that this just overall looks much better. Um, so really what I'm going to do is just basically keep it as this. Um, if For those of you who want to look around in the settings, there are a lot of things that went away. Um, for example, fluid width and fluid height are no longer here. You now actually explicitly specify your width and height using as you would in CSS, so 100% or 100px if you, that's what you really wanted to do. Um, Media settings, nothing's really changed there. Playlist settings, nothing really has much changed there. Controller settings, this is still uh, not completely functional as far as controller only is concerned. That's the next thing I'm going to be working on. So, uh, logo settings, uh, now there used to be logo where you could specify what, your, what you wanted the position to be on the logo. All of that's done in the theme now, the CSS, which I'll, I'll just breeze over in this. And I'm going to be recording more of these videos that go into more depth over these things. Uh, player to player still works the exact same. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit save preset. So we now have a preset set up for this media front. So what I'm going to do is go and edit this view that I have on the front page. And as far as making it turning this into a media player, this 
works the same. So there is still a media player style. And we're just going to go ahead and hit add, apply. We can still select the preset in the style. So all of this should be familiar. The one big difference between 1.0 and 2.0 is now instead of the player guessing what fields you want to include and play, you now must explicitly select what fields within the view you want to pull into the media player. And this is done on a per field basis. So we're going to actually start by the, the image because we do want to pull in the image into the player. Uh, for those of you who uh, do this and actually walk through, you'll notice that there is a new section called Media Front Settings. This is new to MediaFront 2.0. And in here, you will see we get to select the field type within the player. And basically, the player takes interest in certain fields. It takes interest in images. It takes interest in playable media. It, uh, the, default, the, the default template takes interest in the title because that's what it shows in the playlist. But you can also configure this thing and actually configure your own custom templates to be interested in other fields. So we have here, we have a selection of none. None means that you do not want to pull in this field into the media player. Uh, title means you want to make this field the title. Media means you want this to be the playable media within the player. Image means you want to pull this in as the image. Um, you get to select the preview style, which is the style that's in the main player area, and then also a thumbnail style. And these are the image styles within Drupal that you want to show. So instead of pulling in the original image into the thumbnails and taking all that bandwidth, you can utilize the image cache capabilities of Drupal to pull in special sizes. So we're going to go ahead and apply to all displays. The media is the same way. You'll notice that's the media front settings. I've already selected this as being the media type. Um, you can choose if you want this to be the intro, the commercial, a pre-reel, or the main media content, or post-reel. It defaults to media content. Here are some descriptions for that below. And then on title, we just need to make sure that we have the title field selected um, to pull into the media player. And that right there basically sums up the major difference between 1.0 and 2.0, is that you must explicitly tell it what fields it should be interested in. I was able to radically simplify the MediaFront module by doing this. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're just going to hit save. And you'll see that this view just suddenly changes into a media player. And um, just from just playing around with this, you'll, you'll notice that it just, it, 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 it's more responsive, it behaves much better. Um, another thing is, um, and for those of you who are interested in the back end, most of you probably aren't interested in the back end, the way that this is actually pulling in a view now, it uses service, it not uses services, it uses, um, it uses a JSON endpoint um, to get the playlist. What this means, uh, for those of you who um, basically in layman's terms, what this means is now this player is embeddable, which means you can put this player on some other website and it will ping back to your server to populate the playlist. So this is now embeddable, which is a huge um, plus that was brought into the MediaFront 2.0 branch is embeddable players, um, as you see here, which is, which is really exciting. Let's actually do another use case. Um, the other use case that I want to do is let's leave the grid uh, below. So let's actually create a new, a new view. Let's actually create a new page from this. So I'm just going to say new page. And I'm going to call this the video media grid. Media grid. I'm going to hit apply. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove this media player. Uh, we are going to remove this and we're going to turn this back into a grid on this page. Okay. And we're going to hit save. And so let's go back to, so now let's go to media grid. So you'll see I just turned this back into a grid. Uh, we can probably change it back to 16 on the pager. 16, this page only, apply. We'll hit save. And so now 
we should see that we have the media grid. Now the, the really popular thing with the media front 1.0 was to put a media player at the top of the view. In media front 1.0 this was done using a special block called a media player. Um, this was actually kind of a hack and what I've done in media front 2.0 is completely redid how you do that. How you do that in media front 2.0 is you go and you edit your view and there is now a new area handler called media player. So media front player is what you'll just add to this view. So this becomes a handler. It's an area handler within views. And so you can just hit apply. We can choose what preset we want. So uh, the player and then um, also uh, just ignore the media front settings. I probably should remove that for the area handler. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just do it this for this page, apply. I'm gonna hit save. And you will notice once I did that, it it this this player, the preset that I set up, suddenly became the um, header for this grid. Now one thing that I have not done yet, um, and be, just because I haven't really figured out how I'm going to do it elegantly, is to do the click, where if you click on this, it throws it up into the player. Uh, for media from 1.0, it was actually kind of intrusive, uh, meaning I overrode the click from this and it would actually um, overrode it to, um, instead of actually navigating to the page, it would throw that media up into the, the handler. Uh, for most people, they don't, I'm not sure if that's actually what they want, so I'm still in the, still working out how that's gonna actually work. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, mute on that. Another thing is, is this will automatically skip to the next one. Um, so if you set up a grid and you want uh, to play one after another. This is a great way of doing this. You can actually set up the you can set up the grid um, in this way and you can just play the media media playlist. Um, another thing that you might notice is whenever I set up this preset, I, I set it up to include the playlist. Um, and you'll notice that I included the same preset into this view, but the playlist is completely gone. In fact, there's no real way to get to it. The reason is, is because I automatically disable the playlist. Um, and this was another really big difference between 1.0 and 2.0. In 1.0, whenever you disable the playlist, the and you had a playlist associated with the player, it just flat out wouldn't play the playlist. Um, meaning it re, if it removed it from the view, it just wouldn't work. This has been fixed in MediaFront 2.0. So you can now associate a playlist, like I'm doing here, to a media player that has a disabled playlist, which is pretty exciting because now there's a lot of people that want to have just a player and to control what media is played within that player through a playlist driven from views, but they don't want that playlist to be visible on the page. You can now do that using um, using this method. In fact, you could even go to like Let's let's um, you can even go back to this media gr this the very first example we did which was just media. If I went into this preset and I disabled the playlist, which I can actually just do right now, it's not a big deal. And I said edit player settings playlist and went over to display and you just said disable playlist. The this will still work, and you'll notice that it's actually pulling in the view. And once this actually completes, it will automatically move on to the next item in the view, which is really exciting. Um, just because this is now a playlist, it's like a back end playlist driving this thing. Okay, I think I've beaten that one to the ground. Let's go over another use case that I'm also really excited about and was actually apparent or was brought in. Um, it was a new feature that, that came in um, unintentionally, and it came in because I re-architected the way that this, that this works. And this use case is, let's say we want to go back to the grid, so media grid, and instead of showing thumbnails, I want every grid to be a media player that plays whatever's, whatever the media is. 
in MediaFront 1.0, you just couldn't do this. You could not do that use case because you could not, um, because the MediaFront presets were not field based, it was more like node based, um, which that's a big difference between 1.0 and 2.0, is that 2.0 is now field based instead of uh, node based. Uh, so let's actually just run through that use case real quick. I, I'm, for this, I'm going to set up a new preset that will look good as a grid. So I'm going to call this grid player. Oh, let me just make it one word, grid player. You can tell I've already done this before. And one thing I'm going to do is I am going to change the width and height. I want this to be uh, 300 pixels. Um, we'll make it smaller than that. We'll make it 200. 200 pixels by 300 pixels. Okay. And also, just to, just to uh, illustrate, I want to change the templates. Uh, the theme. Uh, these are all jQuery UI still, but you'll notice that it just looks better. I've made I've made it more streamlined. There are two new themes that you guys can check out, and these are white base themes. One I particularly like is this Aristo, which I'd like for everyone to check out. It just it looks really pretty. Um, so obviously I need to disable my playlist here. So playlist display disable playlist, and it also looks like I got my width and height wrong. So let me. Let me see, what did I do here? So this needs to be 300. Actually, let's make this two and then make, let's make this one. Or 150. Well, 100 seems just like not that much. So we'll hit save and then that, yeah, that looks about right. Um, that I'm, That's gonna be set up in a grid. So this will be just called the grid, the grid player. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna create a new view or a new page in the view. I'm gonna add a page. And we're going to undo this media player. We want it to be a grid. And we're going to only do it for this page. Four is fine. And we need to change this again because it's, it defaults to the... So we'll make this 16. Now, because this media player, uh, this, this is a field-based, um, because MediaFront is field-based now, we can literally go over here and the formatter, we can change to um, media front player. Now you'll notice I have a media player here. That's from another initiative that I'm working on within the media module. But you'll see here I have the media front player and we can select the preset um, of the grid player. So we just wanna show this as a grid player. We want to apply to only this page and we're gonna hit apply. And on the image, we don't want to show the image anymore. We're just going to exclude that from display. And then also the title, we're just going to go ahead and keep. And we're going to call this path, we're going to call this grid player. Or we'll call it media grid. Uh, media. Oh, we already have a media grid. So we'll just call it grid player. I like that. And then we're going to hit save. This is really cool. So we're going to go to grid player, and I'm just going to show you what this did. Grid player. Oh, it didn't do anything. In fact, it messed up. Let me see what's going on. Different presets. Maybe it didn't like that template. No. Hmm. That might be something I have to look into. Let me try just going back to Dark Hive because it. It's one that I know I've tested. It does not, flat out does, does not like that. And let's take a look. Media upload, media front player, grid player. Uh, oh, I said exclude from display. Maybe that's why. Let's try that again. Well, that would be it. Um, and of course, I will figure out what's going on with these these um, uh, undefined indexes. In fact, that's probably what I'll look after look at right after this demo um, that I do. But what you can see here is something that's very interesting. Um, I'm not necessarily sure what use case this would fit. I know that uh, Wikipedia or Wikimedia does this, where they just include the player, and you can just play it in line with the player. And what's funny is you can just get a bunch of these things going, um, which I can't imagine the use case of somebody wanting that. But regardless, this is something that was exposed for free just by me re-architecting the MediaFront module. And you can see it loaded them all up pretty quick. 
Um, and that's the reason, the reason is, is because instead of actually loading the entire file, you see it, it only loaded a, a partial. It's only leading, uh, loading up until it gets the metadata enough to show the time of the, uh, the media. So that looks pretty cool. And that's a, that's a new feature that came in with MediaFront 2.0. Let's actually take a look at the actual node displays. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back to the grid because that's going to be allow me to, we'll say media grid. This is going to allow me to actually go to each individual uh, node. So if I click on this, right now my node display is showing um, just an image and an, an image a file download. Let's actually set up a preset to show media in the node. So I'm going to go to structure, I'm going to go to media front presets. We're going to add a new preset and it's going to be called node player. And I'm going to hit next. And what I want to do here is I don't want to see the playlist, so I'm just going to go ahead and say disable playlist. Which it should already do this anyway for you, but I just want to be explicit about it. So now what we need to do is we need to associate that preset that we just set up to this node display. So we're going to go to structure, we're going to go to uh, content types and we're going to go to manage fields. Now this is this is one thing that just really annoyed me about MediaFront 1.0 is that in order to get that to play on the node you would have to in, you would have to add a special type called media player um, a special field. I really considered this a bad thing because it was like a field that was a consumer of all fields and the, the better way to do this was to actually use uh, field formatters and we do that going to manage displays and so what you do is you just pick pick the um, the item so like let's say media upload and we pick that and we're going to select media front player and so for media front player this actually brings up some settings that we can then change the we can then change what player we want to reference we use node player so I'm going to hit update on that so you'll see I just changed media upload to the media front player and then I create, called it the node player now some of you may already notice a problem in that how do I tell the media player which fields to consume for example let's say I had five or six images attached to this node let's say I had you know other other file fields attached to this node this was a huge problem with MediaFront 1.0 and the reason is is because 1.0 would just pick one it just would indiscriminately just pick a field to display inside the media player and keep in mind with MediaFront 2.0 you must be explicit with every field you want to include so how do we how do we tell the media player what fields to be interested in well we've already told it that it should be interested in the media upload but let's let's go and take a look at the other fields so uh, the first one is the title and the where you do this is you um, okay so it all automatically will bring in the title that's already a given because you can't edit it but one thing I do want to uh, show is if you click on edit in any other field there is a media front settings and this is included in every single field that you include into your um, into your uh, your content type. And what this allows you to do is associate this field to the media player that's that's already being attached to the to the um, to the node. So, for example, I clicked on the media. I want this to be the type of media, and I want it to be the media content. And then make sure we hit save. Let's go to the image. So the image, I just want to click on edit, and you'll notice that I've already selected it as that type, but what I could do is say, hey, I want this to be the title, or I want this to be some custom field. Regardless, we have complete control over what fields it picks now. And you'll notice that I select the style for the preview, and I also select the style for the thumbnail. And if anybody has a better way to do this, I'm, I'm definitely open to suggestions. I was investigating trying to add these in some way to the field formatters but because my field or the media player has to be an aggregate of multiple fields I really couldn't think of a more elegant way to do this than this um, so if anybody has any better suggestions please let me know I, I'm definitely open for suggestions um, and then also another thing that people ask for is hey I want to add custom fields I want to be able to add a custom field and have that show up in my media player um, you can now do that by just adding some random text field or let's say with like the body 
um, you can click on edit on the body and we could say that this is a custom field and we're going to call this body so that whenever I actually create my custom template which I will show in another video you can bring in that field into that template fairly easily so that's how you do that so now we're explicit about every single field that is associated with the media player so now now that we've done that, we can just hit save and we should be able to hit X. And there is our media player. And you can see it actually pulled in the image. I forgot to hide the other image from the display, which I can actually do that right now. So I go to structure content types, uh, manage display. Uh, what did we want to do? We did not want to show this image. So I'm just going to put that down there. I'm going to hit save. And then you'll see that this actually changes to the media player view that everyone's very familiar with already with media front and showing the media player. But the big difference here is that this is now a field formatter instead of actually a, a separate field, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so that is pretty much the nuts and bolts of MediaFront 2.0. Um, again, hopefully, uh, hopefully people will recognize how powerful these changes are in that you now have full control over every field that's brought into it. The media player has completely been refactored. Um, oh, another thing I wanted to mention, and in fact, I even forgot, is the, the, the content or the content types that you want to associate with media no longer have to be a file field. And this is really interesting because let's say we want to just copy and paste um, a YouTube video and we just want to put that somewhere and we want the media player to pull that in. You can now do that inside the fields uh, which this is really exciting um, and it, it's, a, it's a completely different take on um, on how it currently is being done like within the media module where all you have to do is you go to manage fields and let's just go media field and I'm just going to call this uh, uh, actually I'm just going to call this uh, media URL media URL and I am going to make this a text field. This is really cool. So I'm just going to hit save. I'm just going to hit save on that. And I'm just going to hit, uh, so media front settings. I can now make this a media type, uh, media front, so media content. And I just hit save. Now check this out. I go to manage displays and I just want to hide the media upload for now. What I want to do is change this media URL to a media front player, which I can too now. So I have this media front player. I want to change this to a node player and I hit update. So now here is just a text field that I can copy and paste a URL from anywhere, YouTube, Vimeo. Uh, it can be a, a, a file on Amazon. It can be a file on CloudFront. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's a playable media somewhere out there, it can handle it. So let's actually go to Add Content. I'm going to create a new media. So let me go to YouTube and find a video. YouTube. One I always like to do is this. OK, go. OK, go on treadmills. And I'm just going to copy the URL up here. So I just copied it. I'm just going to go over here and say, OK, go on treadmills. Whoops. On treadmills. And under media URL, I'm just going to hit paste. I mean, really, that's all I had to do. Go to YouTube, copy the URL, hit paste on the media URL, and hit save. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to pull in the video from YouTube. But not only that, it's also going to skin it within the actual player, um, the actual player skin. So whenever you actually play it, you'll see the controls come alive. Um, so it, it behaves as if it was just a video on your local server, but this is actually being streamed from YouTube. Unfortunately, you still have the ads. I can't get rid of that because... That's YouTube actually adds that to there. But what you'll see is that this is actually streamed from YouTube. We can do the same thing with Vimeo. So you can go to Vimeo. Uh, we'll just do Vimeo. Actually, instead of taking up time, I, I hope you guys get the, get the hint. We can also go to a Vimeo video, copy and paste it into the URL, and it will just flat out play. Um, there's really nothing on the back end that does that. 
Most of this is just front end. Um, the media player that I built will just swap out the players and it already knows how to control the video using JavaScript, so it just does it. And all of that from a single text field, which is really exciting. Um, so that pretty much sums up the most exciting pieces of MediaFront uh, 2.0. And then hopefully um, this these changes will definitely make it so that it can be um, future-proof, at least for the next couple of years until something even more exciting comes along. Um, but that's it for this, uh, this video. I'll be making some more regarding some more detailed, specific requests and um, how-tos on how to create custom themes and how to upgrade from Media, uh, media Front 1.0 to 2.0 because that's something that really hasn't been addressed yet is how do you upgrade, which currently it has to be done manually, but it can be done manually. So that is a, a future video that I'll be doing. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed, enjoyed this and enjoy MediaFront 2.0. Thank you.